Jesus is Lord. He's not only Lord, but he is my personal Lord and Savior. Well, this morning I'm making cassava soup, cassava creamy soup. And as I make my cassava soup, I would love for us to continue our lesson that we started on Jonah. Last week we did Jonah chapter 1. And this week I want us to continue with chapter 2. I will not go back to talk about chapter 1. I will just continue with chapter 2. So if you would love to know, if you missed chapter 1 or if you would like to know what we talk about, you can watch it on the video from last week. Well, so we see that Jonah was thrown into the sea after the lot was cast and the lot fell on Jonah. Now, imagine being thrown into a raging sea. Imagine what it will be like. We see that Jonah was actually staring into the eyes of death. Jonah was engulfed by death. Jonah was swallowed up by death. Imagine you being in a raging sea full of fear and there is no dry land around there is nothing to hold on to as you are struggling and fighting for your life imagine the fear imagine the terror that was what Jonah was going through as he was in that sea and so God commanded a fish to swallow Jonah imagine being in the belly of a fish Where there is nothing but darkness, Jonah was faced with darkness. Jonah was faced with uncertainty. Jonah was in an uncomfortable condition. Imagine what goes on in the belly of a fish. The kind of fluid, you know, that is in the belly of a fish is the kind of fluid that will cause food to be digested. And Jonah was a food in the fish belly. So imagine with all the coldness, you know, from the intestine and other things that were in the stomach of that fish, the belly of the fish. But Jonah was there because God commanded that fish to swallow Jonah. And it was all because of Jonah's disobedience. Jonah did not want to obey God. Jonah did not want to take the message that God has sent him to give to the people, Jonah did not want to give them the message because Jonah said that if you read Jonah chapter 3 and 4, you see that Jonah made a remark saying that the reason he did not want to obey God was because he knew that God was merciful. Jonah was not sure that God was going to stick by his word. He was not sure. He didn't want to go and cry judgment on that city. And God changed his mind and do not send judgment. He did not want to be embarrassed. So you see, Jonah, because of pride and because of selfish ambition, Jonah decided to disobey God. But disobedience landed Jonah in the belly of God a whale in the belly of a big fish and so Jonah was faced with death scripture tells us that as Jonah was in the fish belly Jonah remembered that there's a God who loved him Jonah began to cry unto God Jonah repented Jonah asked God for forgiveness and as Jonah repented and prayed we see that God Almighty commanded the fish to vomit Jonah on dry land. So you see, the God we serve is a merciful God. The God we serve is a faithful and a loving God. Even though it was because of Jonah's disobedience that Jonah landed in the belly of the fish, but when Jonah repented, from his heart when Jonah cried for mercy unto God God heard Jonah and God delivered Jonah what does 
does that tells you? That tells you that we serve a God that is loving. That tells you that we serve a God that is faithful. That tells you that God will never leave us. He will never forsake us no matter what. That tells you that you are, it's never too late to cry unto God. It's never too late to repent. It's never too late to seek for mercy from God. Many times we fall into trouble because of our disobedience. Many times we fall into bad things because of us wanting to do things our own way, not following God, not listening for the voice of God. We end up into terrible circumstances. But I want you to know this morning that God Almighty is able to deliver As long as we cry unto God, He will deliver us. So I want to encourage you, no matter where you find yourself, I want you to always pray to God to have mercy. Whenever you make a mistake, whenever you fall short, whenever you have problem, remember to cry unto God for mercy. He will hear you. God is no respecter of person. If God did it for Jonah, God can do it for you. I don't know what you are faced with today. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know how or why you are in the situation you are in. But I want you to remember what Jonah did. I want you to cry unto God. Ask God for mercy. And I believe that God Almighty will show mercy. God will command the fish, the big fish that has swallowed you, the trouble that has swallowed you, the problem that you are faced with. No matter what it is, whether it is sickness or disease, whether it is death, no matter what it is, whether it, it is a marital situation, whether it is from your children or whatever it is, I encourage you to cry unto God for mercy. And God Almighty will listen because the God we serve, He's forgiving, He's faithful, He's loving, and He's always willing to lift us up. So I pray that we remember that we serve a God who loves us and a God that we can cry unto whenever we are faced with circumstances and with problems. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for mercy today. We pray that God, whatever we are going through, that you will have mercy on us. In Jesus' name.